Hi guys, it's uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and today I thought I would take a few minutes to uh, review um, a distribution of Linux that I saw a couple days ago. I think it's been around for a while, but it's a distribution of Linux that's coming out of Brazil, uh, and uh, I have to tell you, it's the closest thing to Windows 10 that I've seen, and it still be Linux, and so I think you'll enjoy it. I did a uh, short video. Uh, yesterday uh, on the channel to uh, set the music just to let you take a look at it to preview it but I thought today I would go ahead and set it up and show you uh, the setup itself and then do a product review on it uh, narrated so let's get started with that Um, I'm back out on my Farron OS Linux system. I'm in Oracle Virtual Machine VirtualBox 6.1 and I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, Windows FX. So let's go up to Machine. Let's go to New for a new machine and let's call this uh, Windows FX. I'm going to give it uh, a 2 uh, subtitle. And then let's click uh, Next. Well, first of all, let's go up to Windows and change it to Linux since it is Linux. Uh, and then it is based on Ubuntu 64-bit, so I'm going to select Ubuntu 64-bit, click Next. All right, I'm going to give this uh, 10, uh, 4096 megabytes or 4 gigs of RAM. And so let me do that, and let's go ahead and click Next here. We are going to create a virtual hard disk now. We are going to create the VDI virtual disk image. And we are going to dynamically allocate that. So leave that ticked. Click Next. Uh, I am going to change the size of this to 20 gigabytes for the uh, initial uh, or for the final size of the drive. It is, it is dynamically allocated, which means it will start out small and grow and go up to 20 gigs. And let's create that. And so we're ready to go. But let's go up into Settings first and make some changes here as I normally do. So let's come down to System, verify some things, and then uh, configure some other things. All right, so here I want it to uncheck the floppy. We do not have a floppy drive. I want to select the hard drive and move it up the boot order so that when we launch this, it will come up after we do the install, it will come up and restart on the hard drive, not the optical. Uh, so it won't repeat the process. Let's go to Display, and let's give this thing the full 128 megabytes of video memory. I'm going to leave it on VMS VGA. Uh, for storage, let's click Empty here, and let's go up to the optical drive. Select it, choose a disk file, and let's come down in my ISO pool. I have the Linux F FX. It's now called Windows FX. So let's select that, and it is a pretty large file, 3.2 gigabytes in size. Let me go ahead and click OK, so we have the location in here. Um, and then coming down to audio, Pulse Audio ICHAC97, enable audio output is fine. For network, I am going to go to adapter 1, enable network adapter, but I am going to change this to a bridged adapter. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want this uh, virtual machine to come up on the same network that my main PC is on, so I need to bridge that adapter. The name of this uh, connection is going to be ENP2S0. And by the way, that means, if you're, if you're not familiar with it, that means that it is an Ethernet um, port 2 socket 0 connection. Okay? So let's go back to storage and verify that. Good. All right, so let's click OK, and we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and launch this thing. So let's click Start. And um, let me... Uh, Cancel here, cancel, and um, I think that should come up on the, uh, yeah, full screen. And so we're ready to go. It's launching. Take a look at this, guys. This looks just like uh, Windows 10 does the same thing Windows 10 does when you uh, uh, boot it up for the first time. All right, so let's, uh, I may have to install... Um, the uh, okay so alright so it is in uh, uh, 
Portuguese, and so we will have to say English here. And let's click OK. And um, all right, and so let's say you want to configure the uh, system resolution. Yes, we want to do that. And let's see what it gives us out of the box here. Uh, I don't think we're going to get 1920 by 1080 out of the box. Um, no, we're not going to get that. So let's go with this one for now. Let's apply that. And uh, let's keep this configuration and close it. We will have to install the um, Virtual Machine Guest Editions. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, it's unable to insert it. I can't do it well before you install, apparently. All right, so um, let's go ahead and install Windows FX. I'm going to double click on it. And this is the Calamaris installer, by the way. It looks familiar. Windows FX 10, American English. Let's go ahead and click Next. Uh, I am on the New York time zone, so that's good. America, New York. Click Next. Uh, English keyboard with the default keyboard layout. That's good. Click Next. Uh, for this particular demonstration uh, video, I'm going to just say erase the disk. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I'll leave everything just erase disk, master boot record, uh, dev SDA. Let's click Next. Go ahead and put in my name, Data Pioneer as the uh, username. I'm going to call this thing uh, Windows FX2 uh, VM. And the password, let me give that password for the user account. Well, we type it, if I can type today. All right, and let's click Next, and it's ready to go. So let's go ahead and start installing this and install now. All right, so this takes about, uh, oh, eight, nine minutes. So I will pause the video and come back after it's completed. Okay, I'm back, and uh, it is done. It took about eight minutes, as I said it was going to take, uh, roughly eight minutes to complete. Not bad for an installation. Uh, and by the way, I'll put a link out under the video uh, on YouTube uh, under my channel for um, the link to uh, distrowatch.com or to the website itself at windowsfx.org where you can grab the uh, ISO file uh, and download it for yourself and uh, install it and uh, try it out. Okay, so we're at uh, restart now. Tick, got a tick in the box there. And so when I click Done, it should come up, and it should boot right into um, the operating system. We may have to install uh, the guest editions depending on whether uh, it comes up to a full screen resolution or we can't get it there. We'll, we'll see if we can work with that. So let's go ahead and click Done and let it reboot. And as you can see, uh, it looks just like Windows 10. If, you're, if you have ever used Windows 10, I'm sure you have. And so let's just bring that up and boot into it. And uh, I like this uh, Windows FX. It's got a lot of possibilities. If you've watched my video on the short video set to music, uh, you can see that it's a wonderful operating system. Uh, I haven't done extensive testing on it, but I do like what I see. And so, um, so far anyway. So let's go ahead and log in. And so here is the moment we're going to see whether the display is correct or not. All right. And Cortana is coming up. See how we can turn this off. All right, we got it turned off. That's the uh, Windows FX is uh, attempt for Cortana. The, uh, the sound of the voice doesn't sound as good as Windows 10, but uh, they're working on that. All right, so I'm not going to mess with any of this here. I'm not going to check for drivers and updates. I think I'm going to let uh, uh, just go ahead. Well, I can, I can do that. Check for drivers and updates. And uh, let's see if we have any updates here. Um device is not working, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue using the manual installed driver. And let's go ahead and apply that. And 
close all right let's see if we can um, get to display check out the display there we are and in display we are at 800 by 600 that's not good um, 1920 by 1080 does not appear to be on the screen so that's the next one to it so I'm going to apply that and go ahead and keep this uh, configuration for now and uh, so this is uh, trying to get rid of this thing right here uh, I don't seem to be able to let me see if I can quit Cortana um, configure and run this all right that's what I need to do all right so we got rid of Cortana that's a good thing I don't use Cortana in Windows 10 anyway I can't stand Cortana all right so let's go ahead and see if we can't get the um, insert the guest edition CD image here and get this going so let me go ahead and run that and put in my root password sudo password actually and um, install the guest editions and then see if we can't get this to come up to a full display it's going to take a few moments may have to reboot the um, operating system again I may do that anyway but uh, I may run a uh, updates before I do that <laughs> Like I said, uh, Windows uh, FX uh, looks like a really nice operating system, actually, and um, it is out of Brazil. It is based on Ubuntu, I believe 18.04 LTS, uh, and Debian, probably Debian Buster, or, uh, yeah, probably Buster, but Ubuntu Bionic for sure, I believe. Uh, and, and it's an attempt to um, mimic the uh, Windows 10 look and feel, and it does a great job of doing that. Once we get in here, I'll, I'll show you that. Please hit return to close this window. So it's install the uh, updates. So let me go back to um, guest edition. So let me go back to display. And uh, let's take a look at that, see if we can't bump that up to a full resolution. If not, I need to uh, um, restart the operating system. Yeah, it's not there yet. So let's click that and click apply keep the configuration let's go ahead and restart the system again and so let's do a restart all right so we'll restart and we'll see if we can't get it up to full screen if not we'll just leave it where it is um, but I believe we should be able to get it up to full screen now And I tell you, right, at this point, if you didn't know you were running Linux, um, you would think you were in Windows 10, to be honest. All right, so let's go ahead and put in the password. And let's see what we have. We have to go back into display again and, and uh, work with that. Yeah, all right, so let's uh, go back into display one more time. Normally I don't have to mess with this uh, kind of thing, but that's okay. All right, 1920 by 1080, we got it. All right, so let's go up. We got full screen now. Let's keep that configuration. Let's go ahead and close it. And so here we are. This is uh, Windows FX 10, or Windows 10 FX, I think it's called. It used to be called Linux FX, and uh, they changed the name because it does mimic the Windows 10 look and feel. You've got Windows 10 icons over here, uh, so let's do a right click and open the computer. And you can see uh, it does look a lot like Windows 10. Here's the file system, so this is the deviation. Windows 10 does not have this. There's no logical drive letter uh, here, so we've got all of our directories that we see in a normal Ubuntu or any Linux distribution uh, for that matter. Let's go ahead and uh, eject the uh, CD-ROM here. All right, let's go ahead and close this and 
Let's right click and open that again. And so we've got the VBox CD ROM and the VBox hard disk and the file system. Uh, and we do have computer there. So let's close that. Here's the home directory. If I right click and open that, here's our typical Linux desktop for the home directory. Um, here's the home directory username. Here's the documents folder, downloads, music, pictures, public, templates, videos, and then I've got one called Windows FX here. Um, and then you've got your structure over here. So it's, it's the same typical view that you have. Now, I've got uh, Open Media Vault running on a Raspberry Pi 4. So if I uh, select that, uh, I've got some shares out there. So I've got Raspberry Pi SMB CIFS. If I double click that, it should open that up, and it does. And so I have File Store Vol 1 and File Store Vol 2 in a config folder. Uh, if I click on, on this, double click on it, it's asking me to connect. I've got it set up where anybody can access it. So I can access this or touch it anonymously. So let me click Connect, and so I'm in. And so this is on one of my spinning drives, one terabyte spinning drives out on the network. It's my network attached storage set up through Open Media Vault. So if I go back to the network here, and um, or actually I didn't need to do that. Let's go back to open that again, and let's go back to network. Double click and go to the first one. All right, and then let's go up and let's go to the second one. File store vol two. Let's connect to that one anonymously. You can see I've got a Crew Dragon two folder and a Windows FX folder here, and then I've got the config share that I have as well. So we'll get into that. And so these are my um, Docker images that I have set up, containers that I have set up. To, I won't show you that. That's beyond the scope of this video. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. And we've got the network. We've got now the shared uh, shares out there on Open Media Vault. And we have that set up. So let's look at uh, the Start menu. Before we do that, let's look at the panel. We've got Cortana. Uh, I don't want to use Cortana. We've got the ability to set up individual workspaces. All right, so just like in Windows 10. You can add additional ones if you like. All right, so let's uh, get back to uh, here and uh, let's go back to Workstation One. All right, so we've got the software interface here, and so it's kind of like the Windows Store, but it's uh, Linux. So let's come down and um, let me go ahead and select Communications and uh, News, and uh, let's let's select. Uh, trying to find one that I can um, easily install here. Let's just go back up to Romina and uh, select install and let this install but I put in my password first. Let's authenticate and uh, it's going to go ahead and install Romina. That's a remote desktop client. So it's installing now and uh, I like this interface by the way in uh, Windows FX uh, it's kind of similar to my Farin OS Linux. It's, it's based on Ubuntu as well. Ubuntu Bionic, I believe. 18.04 LTS. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. And if I come up to uh, the menu and go up to Internet, there's Romina. And you can see it's colored differently. That's the way Windows 10 does. So if I select it, it's going to open Romina up for the desktop client, uh, remote desktop client interface. Not going to get into it, but I just want to show you that it does come up. It did install it and it worked. All right, so let's come back to the uh, menu here. Here is your file manager. This is the Chrome browser. Uh, I don't use Chrome, so I'm not going to go ahead and, well, I'll go ahead and launch it uh, for your Chrome users. Um, see if it should come up. Make Google Chrome the default browsers. Let's so for now say OK. I don't use Chrome, I use Brave, uh, which is based on. Chrome, so I don't know why I don't use Chrome, but just don't like Chrome necessarily. Let's see uh, what we have here for help and about uh, Google Chrome. See what version we have. We have version 83.0.4103.61, official build, 64-bit. So we got the latest version. 
All right, and we should be able to get out on the web. We got out here to Google search, search on Brave. All right, and so yeah, we're up, we are connected to the web, and uh, we're surfing, so we've got a good connection, and we should because we've got the icon for it right down here. All right, so if we come across um, here, we've got uh, the performance set up. It's kind of mimics Task Manager. This is a System Monitor, monitor in Linux, uh, and so here are the processes that are currently running. Like I said, it kind of mimics the uh, task manager in Windows 10. If I click on resources, it's going to give me a graphical display of CPU history, of memory and swap history, and of network history down here. All right, so this is the typical things that you see in Linux. And then you have a file system link here. So it gives you information about the hard drive, which is uh, mounted at dev sda one uh, ext4 file system, 21 gigabyte hard drive space allocated, uh, 11 available, so that means it's using uh, 9 right now. And, um, right, all right, so let's go ahead and close this. You can change the wallpaper, we'll do that later. All right, so we do have a, um, a weather uh, app here, and so for Asheville, North Carolina, clear skies. Um, I would probably go ahead and change the uh, Fahrenheit, centigrade to Fahrenheit, and some other things, but that's okay. Leave it the way it is now. For printers, I've got printers set up, and you can see that I have the HP DeskJet. My de DeskJet was uh, detected, which is great. That is my network printer. So this did a great job doing that, And uh, but we are in a VM, so that's not to be unexpected. Um, so for my network connections here, I've got a wired connection and uh, sound. I'm at 45% volume here on the uh, operating system for the system itself. And then I've got my calendar, date and time settings there. This is the 1st of June, Monday, and uh, it, time is currently at 12.04 p.m. And then I've got the ability to lock the screen, switch the user, Log off, suspend, sleep, hibernate, restart, or shut down. All right, let's go back to the menu, uh, see what we have. So this is the shut down the computer. This is the leave the session or log out. This is the ability to lock the screen. Here's the terminal. And then the terminal, um, here's the default terminal. And uh, I'm not going to go ahead and configure this terminal right now, but I'm just going to go ahead and do a uname minus A, and so we see that it is Linux Windows FX2 VM. It's using a kernel 5.6.15 for Windows FX10 generic, um, and so that looks good. And let's take a look at the amount of space being utilized right now. Run a df-kx uh, or dash kh for human readable. We're using 45% of the drive right now. Um, Dev SDA one, so that's not bad. Let's look at memory. That's free, and you can see that uh, we've got four gigs of RAM um, set up, and we've got uh, a little over two and a half gigs available. Uh, so that's not bad. All right, I believe HTOP is installed here, but I think it's uh, it is one of our options. So let's go up to the menu here. That's the store. That's the file manager. Let's go over to accessories, and we've got uh, Belina Etcher, which is nice. We've got Midnight Commander out of the box, which is nice as well. All right. And then uh, let's get back to accessories. Um, mouse pad, plank, screenshot, so we can take a screenshot. Text info. Uh, for education, we've got the LibreOffice Math. So we do have the LibreOffice Suite. For games, we just have Steam. For graphics, we've got uh, GIMP, uh, Inkscape, uh, and LibreOffice Draw. For Internet, we do have the Firefox web browser as well. So let's go ahead and click on that and see what version of Firefox we have. All right, so let's uh, bring that up to full screen. And so if we go over to uh, Help and About Firefox, can see that we are running the 76.0.164 bit 
latest version of Firefox browser so that's great alright so let's go ahead and close that and let's click uh, close tabs alright so let's come back up to internet and we do have uh, Google Chrome here of course Romina Skype Steam and Transmission for Office we do have the full LibreOffice suite as I mentioned and we can get into uh, Writer let's take a look at uh, the version we have should be six dot something and so if I go to let me go ahead and uh, click OK click help and about LibreOffice we can see we're running 6.4.3.2 uh, and it's a build for Ubuntu so it's the latest version very good alright so let's close this and get back to um, office and then sound and video we've got simple screen recorder that's what I'm using to record this video get the VLC media player out of the box very good administration here we have uh, gparted we have htop so let's bring htop up let's go to full screen on htop and so you can see that we are running 874 megs of memory out of the four gigabytes allocated to the system We've got 131 tasks. We have 243 threads. We've got one task running right now. Load averages are uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.58, 0 0.47. Very good. Been up for 13 minutes and 19 seconds. So looking good on that end. Let's go back to uh, administration. Midnight Commander, as I mentioned. So for Midnight Commander, we've got the full Midnight Commander look there. Uh, and so let's go back to administration again. Uh, power statistics, printers, software. So if we get software, that's the software, the software store that we had on the menu. Um, if we go back to administration again, the updater, for the software updater, this is the way you can update your system if you don't want to do it via the terminal. And so it's going to check for updates, and since I didn't do it via the terminal, it's going to do it um, this way. It says that we do have updates that we can take advantage of. I'm going to go ahead and just and say install now. It shouldn't take very long, so let me go ahead and run that. I like to update the system as soon as I can, and I will do a snapshot of this at some point, and uh, that way it will uh, I'll be able to uh, roll back to a good snapshot, a good system state of the system if something happens here. So it's installing updates now, and it should be done here shortly. Um, and so I like the look and feel. It's very responsive. It's a very Windows 10 look in appearance and feel in appearance actually as well with the panel at the bottom. It's kind of like the taskbar. So it's installing the updates and we should be done here shortly. It's up to date so let's click OK. Very good. Let's go back out to uh, administration. Um, and so we did the uh, keyboard here Rep preferences we've got additional drivers that we can take advantage of we can do advanced network configuration if we want uh, so let's take a look at that and see what we have and that's the same look that we had earlier okay and so preferences we've got date and time we can change the date and time if we like um, so this is uh, I want to use the network time protocol here not sure what it's based on but we can um, let's base let's look display the 24-hour clock let's get off of yeah let's do the 24-hour clock and uh, so let's close this I don't need to change the time it's good and uh, for preferences we I think we're just about done for desktop for display for places uh, nothing different there so let me uh, see I'm looking for backgrounds so let me just click in background there's a go backgrounds let's click that and uh, at some point I would probably install time shift on here if I were if this were installed on uh, you know, on metal but I'm not going to do it if it's a VM uh, bare metal install I would do that alright so we've got a lot to choose from here guys for backgrounds we've got the Windows 10 background now for dark windows we light windows, so dark windows would be this. Um, so let's look at changing it to perhaps to something else. Um, Paradise. 
Uh, let's get out of this altogether because I don't like this over here. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Um, so let's do a moonlight and soft waves. Oh, okay, so it's late. it's coming up now. Let's do moonlight and uh, so let's select that. All right, so there we go. Okay, so get the regular look there, and if I go back to, uh, I know there's a way to get the backgrounds without having to type it in. Uh, it should be under preferences, I think, or administration, but I don't see it on the list, so that's interesting. Um, let's type it in again. Oh, for backgrounds. All right, then let's go back to uh, wallpapers and see what else we have here. Um, I like the Ubuntu Cinnamon. There we go. Okay, so all right, so this is the Ubuntu look, and so you kind of get away from the Windows 10 look when you do that, but that's all right. Um, and then um, one of the other things was settings. And so it doesn't call it settings for some reason. But anyway, so we looked at that anyway. We looked at the full gamut. And so this is Windows 10 FX, guys. Um, like I said, it looks very much like um, Windows 10, uh, I have to admit. And I believe um, even if we do um, recent files, yeah, it kind of looks like... Um, Windows 10 version of recent files um, and so places connect to config here desktop get to the desktop itself so this has been a, a quick look uh, full system setup and review of Windows FX or Windows 10 FX I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down and so this has been Data Pioneer if you like this video go ahead and click on the uh, the video uh, uh, like button and like my video if you want to subscribe hit the subscribe button and so this has been uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel have a nice day take care bye bye